In this video, I'll work through some sample problems in finding number patterns. For this first example, we're given a sequence of numbers as just a list of numbers, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, and so on. And the first thing we're asked for is a recursive formula for this sequence. So when we're thinking about the recursive definition, what we're thinking about is how do we get the next number in the sequence based on the numbers that came before it. Typically in these problems, the relationship is that we're adding something at each step. So to get from 4 to 7, we add 3. To get from 7 to 10, we add 3. To get from 10 to 13, we add 3. 13 to 16, we add 3. We see a consistent pattern, and so we've identified the relationship that defines this sequence. So for the recursive formula, we have to do two things. We have to tell where the sequence starts, and so if we just decide we're going to use the letter A to represent the sequence, we don't have to use the letter A, but it's a good letter to use, so we'll say A1 is going to be 4. That's all we have to say. We just have to say this sequence starts at 4. That's all we're saying there. So remember, a sub 1 means the first thing in the a sequence, the first number in the a sequence. And then the real meat of the definition comes in the next part, which is where we talk about the recursive relationship. How do we figure out what a sub n is based on the ones that came before it? So the one that comes right before a n is a n minus 1. And what we've seen at the top here is that what we're going to do to a n minus 1 is we're going to add 3. And that's going to give us the next one in the sequence, the a sub n. So when we think about this, we think the nth number in the sequence, and this is the one that comes before that. In other words, the n minus first. And then what we do is we add 3 to that. Now, we're not going to do that all the time, right, because the very first one, that 4, doesn't have anything that came before it. And so we have to say that this recursive relationship is for n greater than or equal to 2. We start that recursive relationship at the second number in the sequence. That's when we start adding 3. So that would be our recursive formula, our recursive definition for this sequence. Next up, for the same sequence of numbers, now we want to find a closed formula for this sequence. Now, closed formulas can be a little bit trickier. But oftentimes it helps for us to know the recursive definition. And so remember, the recursive definition here is that we're adding 3 at each step. And so one good rule of thumb when you're trying to find a closed formula is to find a sequence that's maybe not exactly the sequence that you have, but something that's similar, easier to think about, and has the same recursive relationship. So what would be an easier sequence to think about where we add 3 every step? Well, that would be the multiples of 3. And so what we're going to do is make ourselves a little chart. So n just counts which spot are we on. So n equals 1 is the first spot, second spot, third spot, fourth spot, fifth spot, and so on. And 3 times n, those are going to be those multiples of 3. So that's going to be 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, and so on. And now our sequence is 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. So do we see a relationship between that easier-to-think-about sequence and the sequence that we actually have? Well, what we can see is that we're actually just adding 1 to get from the easier sequence, the multiples of 3, to the sequence that we actually have. And so that means that our sequence is 3n plus 1. And so that's the closed formula, the closed definition that we're looking for. a sub n is 3n plus 1. Now, we call this closed rather than recursive because on the right-hand side here, there's no reference to previous terms. A recursive definition, the definition is defined in terms of what came before. Our closed definition, we don't need to know what came before. We just plug our number n, the position that we're in, into that formula, and that spits out the number in the sequence. All right, next example. In this one, we're given a closed formula, right? So here, bn equals 4n plus 2, and we're asked to do two things. We want to write out the first few terms of the sequence, and we want to find a recursive formula for the sequence. So let's first start by writing out the first few terms. So b sub 1 is going to be when n equals 1, so that's 4 times 1 plus 2, which is 6. b sub 2, that's 4 times 2 plus 2, that turns out to be 10. b sub 3 is 4 times 3 plus 2, that works out to be 14. b sub 4, 4 times 4, plus 2, that works out to be 18. And what we're looking for here is we're looking to write out enough of these terms so that we see what the pattern is. Because eventually we're trying to find a recursive formula for this sequence. So how do we get from 6 to 10? Well, we're going to add 4. 
And how do we get from 10 to 14? Again, we're going to add 4. From 14 to 18, we're going to add 4. So that consistent pattern where we're adding 4 at each step, that's going to help us find our recursive definition. Remember that for the recursive definition, we have to say two things. We have to say where the sequence starts. In this case, B1 is 6. And we have to tell how each next term in the sequence is defined in terms of the ones that came before it. So what is B sub n going to equal based on what came before? Well, it's going to equal the previous term, Bn minus 1, plus that 4. That's what we're seeing when we're adding 4 at each step. And this is just how we say that symbolically. And again, and again that's going to be for n greater than or equal to 2. And so there's our recursive definition. For this last example, this time we're given a recursive definition, and we're asked to once again write out the first few terms, and then also find a closed formula. So let's start by writing out those first few terms. So C1, that's easy because they tell us that C1 is 6. So we don't have to do any computations there, we're literally just copying and pasting. Now what about C sub 2? Well in that case, we're looking at our definition, which says that Cn is Cn minus 1 plus 6. So in this case, our n is 2. So we have c sub 2 minus 1 plus 6. But that's c1 plus 6. We know that c1 is 6, so that's 6 plus 6, which is 12. Similarly, c3 is going to be c2 plus 6. We just figured out that c2 was 12, so that's 12 plus 6, which is 18. c4 is c3 plus 6. We already figured out that C3 is 18, so that's 18 plus 6, which is 24. And again, this gives us the first few terms, so our sequence is 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on. Now if we're trying to find a closed formula, what we see is that our sequence increases by 6 every time, so the easy sequence that goes up by 6 every time would be multiples of 6. So if we made our little chart, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, and so on. The easy sequence that goes up by 6 each time is multiples of 6. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, and we say, hey, that's actually exactly the sequence that I have. I don't have to modify that at all. My formula for my closed formula is going to be c sub n equals 6n, and that's it.